Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, May 19th, and we have a little bit of a surprise off the th southeast United States coastline, but that's not a surprise really to us. We've been talking about the possibility of a warm core low developing over the Gulf Stream due to the trough split that got cut off down here, and indeed we have a, a nice little tight circulation you can see showing up here, and the NHC has now designated this Tropical Storm Alberto, making it the first storm of the 2012 Atlantic hurricane season and uh, in May and uh, pretty impressive over here you can see the tight circulation it's a little bit weighted on the eastern side of the convection most of its off to the west here uh, that's partially due to limited inflow coming from the southeast into the southeast quadrant we also have the upper level jet stream still down here shearing off most of the convection that's trying to develop there and uh, so it's weighted off to the northwest which is the opposite of what we normally have for early season storms we normally expect it to be sheared off to the east and the northeast uh, but it is different this time around and uh, most of the convection is now now weighted on the side that is towards the coastline, which means that as this approaches and tries to come out eventually in a couple of days, uh, the, the northwest quadrant at least will likely be affecting uh, the coastline in here. So expect heavy rains and gusty winds from this as it tries to make its move out in a couple of days. And we'll talk about the track more in a bit. Here's the radar picture of it. Uh, you can see a nice little tight core here. Uh, generally wound up, you can see one main spiral band really coming into it here. and. Uh, little bit of an eye feature. You sometimes see these with the shallow systems that don't have the deepest of convection. The center gets dried out and all that. It's not really an eye, uh, but uh, you can definitely see the circulation. It helps point out the center here, and uh, we definitely have a closed circulation uh, that is why it has been classified. Here's the upper level wind map. You can see that what has happened now. The jet stream has been suppressed and is now sagging down to the southeast and you can see that the elongated area of uh, upper low pressure has now extended outward over the water. Remember we talked about the biases in some of the models, particularly the GFS, which were trying to keep the upper low bound up here in Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. And we talked about the GFS overdoing the convection in the Caribbean, which, would which it was preventing it from moving the upper low over the coast. But if the GFS proved to be too strong with the convection, the upper low could make it over the water and it has now and you can see that it is stacking up with the surface low which has become Alberto and has allowed it to become warm core because now there's less wind shear underneath the upper low with the calmer winds aloft has allowed the thunderstorms to sit there for the last 18 hours and has warmed the upper atmosphere and you can see the outflow now curving anticyclonically or clockwise out from the northern side of the storm indicating that the core is warming and has now transitioned enough to be called a tropical cyclone and uh, you can see the jet stream is still here right off to the south so it's going to be difficult to get convection going in the southeast quadrant probably for the rest of this storm's life I'm guessing at this point it's probably going to be difficult but again most of the weather is weighted towards where the land is so for mainly for these folks it doesn't matter what's going on over here most of it is already on the coastline or getting close to it as it tries to come up to the northeast eventually in a couple of days and now looking at the big picture here uh, there are a couple of problems uh, for Alberto's intensification prospects over the next couple of days uh, we have a couple things going on first of all notice that we have this low up here off the South Atlantic coast this is the other low that developed from this mess and this trough split also notice that the cirrus clouds are uh, coming up from the north here indicating that we probably have some kind of low pressure system trying to develop in the northeastern Bahamas and the models wind this up in the next 24 to 36 hours into an nice little low so we're going to have a triangle one two three here of uh, lows that are going to be interacting with each other this could cause a little bit of a problem for Alberto because of the competition for inflow and again will limit the southeast quadrant because inflow will be stolen uh, from the Gulf Stream over here and most of its inflow will probably continue to come in from the north and northwest uh, being kicked in by this low pinwheeling this air down the problem is is that as this low backs towards the coast most of the inflow is going to be kicked down off of the land mass instead of the water and the problem is the air mass here is rather dry notice that over here in the center of the continent we have all these little bit of cumulus where the skies are clear but not really clear because there's this popcorn convection going off here that's because of the moist inflow coming in from the Gulf of Mexico but when you go east notice that that dies off and we don't have as many of those low level popcorn clouds that's because the air mass over here is very dry and if you look at the dew points over the Carolinas they're down in the 40s here it's really not that moist so getting all this inflow coming down into the storm off of the Carolinas and Virginia may not be the best for it and may choke off some of the convection uh, 
during the next couple of days or so. But some intensification is possible, especially with the tight vortex. Remember, we've seen all these tiny storms. When they're this tiny, they can easily feed back uh, for a little bit and eventually choke themselves out by taking in too much dry air. But for a brief period, can wind up. And we could see this get up between 50 and 60 miles per hour, moderate tropical storm. But I don't think it'll be getting much stronger than 60 miles per hour if it does strengthen. It hasn't strengthened that much during the last 12 hours, which indicates it's probably not going to explode here unless the environment dramatically improves, which it probably will a little bit, but not all that much, especially after the slow starts kicking dry air into it. Uh, but 50 to 60 miles per hour, I think, is the peak, and will probably peak before any kind of a possible landfall. Once it starts coming north, I think the environment will start becoming less favorable as this slow comes up and starts um, stealing inflow from it and probably shearing it a little bit. Uh, now, here's the... Uh, the sea surface temperatures. This is the other thing that's probably going to limit the system. The fact that the Gulf Stream here is only about 26 degrees Celsius. Yes, the environment is rather cold, which makes it uh, more sustainable. You can probably sustain a tropical storm here with only 23 de degrees Celsius waters, but you can see it does drop off near the coast, and that's the other thing as it tries to come ashore. We'll move over the colder shelf waters and will probably weaken a little bit, and the Gulf Stream is rather thin, uh, but it is strong enough to support, warm enough to support a tropical storm here. Now here's the GFS 24 hour 500 millibar map. You can see the ridge that shows up over New York, New York here and this is going to be blocking this down here, probably meandering off the coast for quite a while uh, through tomorrow and it will not really be going anywhere, perhaps backing down towards the southwest a little bit. You can kind of see how it's moving very, very slowly to the southwest right now. It'll probably be meandering around here for a little while over the next couple of days off the South Carolina and Georgia coastlines. And then it's probably going to try to curve back and come to the northeast because as this ridge moves out, uh, this is going to be moving to the east, and then we have this short wave. You can see over the Midwest here will be coming eastward, and we'll probably start picking this stuff up and bringing it out of the picture, and uh, could bring it over the outer banks or so. You can see the the model spread here rather large, uh, but you can see the general idea. It starts to curve out to the northeast after meandering down here for a while. I think the models have a generally good idea. I would take it scraping the coastline here. I have a feeling it'll have a good shot at North Carolina with heavy rains and gusty winds, um, not so much out to sea, uh, but then it will take it out to sea after that, probably missing Massachusetts there, and it will be converting to extra tropical and possibly even dissipating in the face of the other low over here and the second low. It'll probably start getting absorbed by that point in three to four days. But until then, it'll probably be reaching its peak down here as it meanders and then weakening a little bit as it gets drawn towards the North Carolina coast and then on out like this is uh, where I think it's probably going to go. You can see on the GFS surface map in 24 hours, it doesn't even really see Alberto down here. Again, because of the model resolution, these tiny storms don't always get picked up by the models and aren't even developing it very much. Uh, but you can see that the other low back here and the other low up here are very close in on its personal space and will probably be inhibiting it a little bit as time goes on. But you can see the blocking ridge up here that will be keeping it down there until it moves by and you get the short wave to come in and bring it out. So we're going to be dealing with this for a little while. Uh, it'll probably be a couple of days. Monday is probably when it'll start approaching uh, the coastline, either making its closest approach or making a landfall, likely on North Carolina. But right now, uh, it's hard to say because of the steering currents are rather complicated. Uh, so anything could change within the next 24 to 48 hours. But in general, that's the general idea we're looking at. Probably all along this coastline could get gusty winds and uh, showers and thunderstorms from this uh, because of the spiral bands coming around, regardless of where it exactly tracks. Even 50 miles offshore could get the heavy rains in here. So folks should expect some weather from this. Nothing too significant or dangerous, uh, but uh, this is definitely the kind of thing we were talking about could happen for the last several days and do we have it here one of those nice preseason storms developing from the classic setup that we've been talking about for a while now and uh, this will be interesting to watch over the next couple of days all right that's it for today thanks for watching